Hi everyone, today we're jumping straight into putting together a new building in the city. That's because in this video I'd like to finally wrap up this bridge project by starting with the build you can see me putting together right now. This build is loosely based off of one of the first two structures I made at the start of this project with a few key differences. I swapped out some of the materials such as using mangrove wood for the main structure and a bit of dark oak towards the roof which you'll see in a moment, which I haven't done yet. Otherwise, its most obvious change here, making it unique, is the shape, where you can see, similar to some of the other buildings, it does have two segments on either side, but this one has a slightly different medium-high arch for the path that leads through it. And then there's also this cool window feature on the corner of the build, which we'll take a closer look at shortly, along with a bunch more details once I've finished building this up. Alright, well we've already got some things built up in today's episode, which I suppose was the advantage of working out all of the plans in the previous episode, which has enabled us to just come through and jump straight into building. Firstly, I'd quite like to take a look at the transition between what we made in the previous episode and what we've made in this episode. I did kind of mention that as I move on to the next thing, I kind of add details in between. And so we've got another little courtyard in here, similar to what we have in this section only this time around I've added a, a few slightly different details. And so firstly I've made a small bench here using a couple of various spruce materials. This is actually my favourite way of making chairs. I think it's a really proportionate scale and uh, it's worked quite nicely here. I added another hanging basket and then you'll notice that in between we've got a small structure made up of trapdoors which I'm using to hang some banners. It'd be a nice idea to sort of keep the theme of the banner running throughout the city and I thought this was a rather elegant way of doing it. If I sort of look in F5 you can see there are some carpets up top there, I'm sure we'll get a closer look at that later on. And you'll also notice as we take a look at the building that I've made here already, I've got some vines growing up against the side. However these aren't the regular vines, for those of you who do have a keen eye, you'll notice that these are actually the glow lichen or lichen, just depending on how you like to pronounce that. Uh, but I have gone and tweaked the texture just to make it look uh, less like some kind of strange glowy vine that you find in a cave and more like a regular vine. But why did I do that? Well the reason is the regular vines, as you would know, spread absolutely everywhere and usually you have to use string or something like that uh, to stop it from growing which doesn't look good. And so I figured by using the uh, glow lichen or lichen <laughs> uh, which doesn't spread it'll be a really good way of adding vine details into the world as I feel like the vines are such a beautiful feature to the game that get underused and so yeah that's what I've gone and done on this wall. So as we take a closer look at this build I'm sure you've already picked out some of the main core details but a few things I'd like to point out you notice that in the corners or the transitions of the uh, mangrove wood here I've used some strips spruce wood just to add um, a form of log texture in the right colour but it of course doesn't match the mangrove and so I've covered that up with the trapdoors which is kind of a win-win because it adds a bit more detail but if you was wondering that's why I've got those over there and uh, this gap is for something I'm planning on making in a moment but firstly let's take a look at this window this is actually honestly really quite a simple structure but I really like how it looks adds a lot of interest and detail to this build and you'll notice that for the windows I've used my 
custom textured glass panes and then I've actually used a different type towards the top just to add a bit of uh, separation between maybe a section you can open and then a more detailed permanent section on top or something like that. Uh, as I said earlier, this one is based off of one of the ones we have down here. So let's just quickly take a look at it. It's this one over here. For the trim of the roof, I've used the andesite with the buttons underneath. And that's similar to what I've done over on this one over here. And then I've also got, you know, the uh, similar wall texture as well. But for the roof, I've gone for dark oak. And this is a really sort of interesting style of roof. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out a way to make this work, which would actually look good in the area. And in the end, I went with lots of different individual sections of these pointy bits, whatever you would call that, instead of having one large section like the big spruce one we have over there. And that just sort of worked better for this shape of building and it enabled me to add all kinds of cool little details. I really like this one here. As one person pointed out when I first made this, a lot of water would collect in here, which is a bit unnatural and there should be some kind of a drainage system. But I was just limited as to what I could actually do as there aren't any variations of this type of block. However, over here, I did have a few more options. So of course I do have the stairs, which you can kind of direct the flow of shape through here, which could indicate where the water would run off. But I've also been able to add a little bit of uh, weeds coming out here as a result of all of the moisture, similar to how I have things like moss down here where a lot of the water would collect. And so that's a fun little detail. You can see I use some uh, gates and fences for the trims on the top there. As we head on into the interior, you'll notice it is very compact and tiny in here, similar to how we have the other ones. I haven't fully furnished it yet either, but you can see this is what we've got for this lower section, and then I have a ladder going up to this bit. I quite like this room. It feels really nice and cosy, and then you of course also have the big window in here, which is quite a nice feature, so I'm interested to see what I can make of this area. And up here we have a kind of a small attic area looking out of that window over there. And then as we head on up these stairs, this is a way of getting over to the other side of the building over the archway. And so I've got some small attic space in here, as well as in here, using all kinds of <laughs> various texture tweaks as part of my texture pack. And then using scaffolding, it enables you to move down into this section, which again is unfortunately quite compact. All right, well with that build out of the way, I think we should move straight into putting together another little detail before I move on to some of these next buildings here. Someone mentioned that it could be a really cool idea to have a crane off the side of the bridge, which could be used to lift things off of boats onto here, which I thought was a really cool idea. I'm not sure how realistic what I'm about to do is gonna be. However, it should look really awesome. So let's get together some materials and put together this small crane here. All right, well, here we are. So this thing is finally finished, and this is what I've managed to put together. So what we've got here is a kind of a dark oak structure, where we've got this main pillar here with a crane coming off to one side, and then I've used some chains and grindstones and levers to represent a pulling system, and then we've got a little grabber here using my trapdoors once again, which I used earlier on for some of the manhole covers in the ground. And then we've also got various other details such as the hanging sign and the trapdoors to connect it to this building for a bit of stabilization. We've got some more iron bars and things like these signs to connect these bits around it, which all just helps bring this together. And in my eyes makes what's probably something quite unrealistic a little bit more realistic. And so the idea here is that this could probably swivel a little bit more into this direction, which is where the boats would be coming through underneath here and you could lift up some items that you may need to lift 
and uh, it could even be worked in combination with whatever function or role this building or this building here plays. It could be lifting up materials that it is going to use. Now if you're wondering what this little guy is over here, you've probably seen that I've used a couple of them on the inside of this building as well. This is actually a warped fungus inside a plant pot, which updates the block state texture in my texture pack. So being this small little barrel filled with water, which is a really nice little detail to have in places like this. But anyways, let's jump straight into making this next build here. As I'm putting together this first one here, you'll shortly notice that I also work immediately on the next one, and that's because in some ways these are connected, but we'll take a closer look at that later on. Now when it comes to this first build, I've decided to make this pretty much what I aimed for when I mentioned it in the previous episode, which is kind of like a cliche medieval structure. However, it didn't turn out exactly how I'd originally envisioned it. I was originally planning to make the foundation out of some kind of a stone texture like cobble or andesite or something like that, which I did experiment around with. However, I found that from a distance it just didn't quite look right. The original aim for this bridge was to have a bunch of wooden structures on it so that they looked light and it wasn't too heavy and it didn't clash with the bridge. And that was exactly what that stone foundation did. I felt that it just blended in with the bridge and it didn't look good. And so what I went with was the mud bricks, which fortunately also come in the wall and the slab and the stair variants. So it's very applicable to what I'd already designed. Uh, but I've also played around with the idea of using it in some of the earlier projects as well. And since it has that brown color, although it technically isn't wood, it looks correct and it works well for this build. And so that's what I went with. And then above you'll see that I've used all of the sort of thatched materials similar to some of the other builds. But speaking on the matter of the thatched blocks, I have actually gone and added a few extra designs as part of my texture pack. I mentioned when I first started this project that uh, I sort of went over the ones I currently had, but I mentioned that I wanted to add a few more because I wanted to play around with some new shapes. And now I've finally gotten around to doing that. And so we'll probably take a closer look at all of those details, but you'll certainly notice them as I'm building up this structure here. And then finally, this build on the end here is designed to mirror another of the very first structures that we made on this bridge. And that is because I wanted to add a little bit more weight to this side of the bridge, as the other side has a couple of builds that are just a little bit taller. And I think I mentioned previously, I wanted to kind of even that out as we finish this project. And so I went with just using pretty much the exact same building to get it exactly the same height. I don't think it's that uncommon to have two similar looking builds within the same area, much less within an entire city. So I think this is going to work nicely. But this is of course the one that has the dripstone foundation, actually quite similar to what we just worked on with the mud bricks. It isn't designed to represent dripstone, but rather it has the right color and texture for what I'm trying to create here. And then to carry this up throughout the rest of the build, I used a lot more of the white thatched material to make up the majority of the walls. Now what separates this one from the previous build is that it has a lot more unique shape to it. And so this is actually the first build that isn't built on the grid, but rather a little bit more off to one angle. And it's very noticeable in the roof, but it makes for a cool little foundation as well as you walk through underneath along the pathway. And as you look up, you'll also find that to one side, it actually connects to our previous build and we'll take a closer look at that shortly. But on the other side, there is also quite a nice elegant window, which you'll see. So check this out guys, for the very first time, we can now walk through this entire bridge project which has finally been finished and get a full sense of the atmosphere that we've created here, putting together all of these buildings as well as these new ones that we just made. Now I have of course just made these brand new three buildings which we're going to take a closer look at in a moment, but I have also gone round and added a few additional details here and there, including finishing up all of the interiors. So we've got a lot to check out. Let's start off actually by taking a look 
at the exteriors of these new builds. So this first one here is really quite cool in the very center of the bridge. It really mixes things up quite a bit. And uh, we've got the mud bricks for the foundation. But then I also went and added some jungle buttons, which are very similar in color, just to represent maybe some bricks that are sticking out, but really just add a bit more texture and detail to this place. And then as I'm kind of looking around this thing in first person, you can get a slightly better sense of how I was able to add some of the details to this. And you can also see all of the different Tudor details. So let me quickly show you how I was able to incorporate these into my texture pack. So originally, as you would have already seen, I have this version right here, which goes ahead and connects. And then in this direction, we have uh, the cross and these two are the familiar lines that go diagonally. But then what I've gone ahead and done is replace the green and lime to add a few more details. And so firstly, as you can see, we have this texture right here, which works really well in combination with these two, as you can see, which are kind of like uh, triangles that have a little bit of extra detail here, because in order to create a perfect triangle, which you're about to see, you actually need to do it uh, two pixels at a time. And so that's two pixels, and this is a one pixel triangle with the added line to fill in the gap there. And then I liked this, so I went ahead and added a secondary one, which should be <laughs> this one right here. So that's the downwards one, this is the upwards one. And then what these are, are actually an addition I've made. Because these connect right here, we get these scenarios, which look very good, but I wanted to be able to create uh, individual pillars. And so I incorporated this method, I believe that's the bottom one. And yep, here we go. So instead of connected textures, these are individual textures that you have to manually construct. And it allows you to create segments like this, which has enabled me to not only put together the details for that build, but also upgrade some of these other builds to what I had originally intended for them to look like. And so with that out of the way, let's take a look at this build right here. As you can see, it is slightly off to an angle. And so we've got this smaller section of a kind of junction courtyard, as I like to call it on this side. And then we have a slightly wider one over here on account of the angle. And so I've gone ahead and added in a little planter to fill in that gap. And we've even got some vines using the mangrove roots once again to act as a more desaturated plant block there. And you'll also notice that in a couple of areas we have a bit more moss and that's just to add a little bit of detail to represent where again some of the moisture is. I did a little bit of that down here since I figured watering these plants up here would go ahead and drip down and sort of create some of this moss. But if you're wondering how I created those and these, these are actually another feature to my texture pack which is retextured plant pots once again. These are really elegant and they're actually not my design, but they are credited in my resource pack. And yeah, I mean, I really love the way these look, especially how the leaves overhang on the edges here. I feel like this is as far away from vanilla as you can get, but uh, this is the only thing that I've really tweaked that heavily for this resource pack. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue checking out some of the details I've made. So underneath, the crane here, I did go ahead and add a little bit of a brick foundation just to make it seem a bit more permanently fitted into the area. And then as we come back round to this build, I'll show you on this side, this is the finished window that I put together. Now I'm not sure how all of this side is going to incorporate with the rest of it. So for now it's kind of just slapped on here, but I'm sure that in the future, this side is gonna get worked on a little bit more. Now, whilst I'm down here, you'll also spot that I have a little chimney. In fact, as we fly on up here, you'll notice that there are several chimneys sticking out all over the place, far more than there originally were. And that's because I set myself a goal as I created the interiors to include at least one fireplace or something like a log burner in each of the buildings, as it would have been very appropriate in the sort of time that these buildings were built to have something like that inner home or really any structure as it would be the only way to keep warm. And so we've got lots of chimneys. Unfortunately, most of them are so compact on the interior that they couldn't be full scale chimneys. So we don't have many with smoke coming out, but I'm sure later on in the other buildings in the city, we will have more smoke coming out the chimneys. And whilst I'm up here, 
you can also see that I've kind of just gone round and added in the additional details that I missed earlier on. And I even changed the carpets up top from white to light grey, just so they don't stand out as much from the aerial view. And as we come round to the very first building here, you can see I added a little bit more detail to this window, and I even upgraded the awning on this one to use the yellow carpets to represent hay, just to add a little bit more detail once again. So as I say, I've just kind of gone over everything and made sure it's all nice and fancy. And so now let's go ahead and take a look quickly at all of the different interiors that I've made for these buildings. Now, as I'm sure you've kind of guessed, it's been a recurring theme in this city. They're very compact details on the inside, very compact spaces at least to put the details in. And so I was limited with the amount of stores I was able to actually add. You'll notice there are some signs for different uh, merchants or buildings with functionality, whereas this one here, this one here, and this one here are simply residential buildings due to the fact that they just don't have enough space on the inside to create a shop of some kind. So let's start off down on this side. This right here is Headwings, and they are a hatter. So as we walk on in, you'll see we've got a small store at the bottom where the hatter can go ahead and uh, receive his customers from in here and I'm sure he's got some storage and bits and bobs and there's just a lot of hats on display in all sorts of elegant colors to uh, sort of you know show the customers what he could make or what is for sale and then as we head on up here unfortunately there wasn't enough room for a staircase but we do have a ladder which will take us up to a small workshop area so up here this is where I imagine he creates the hats now I've honestly never seen a workshop for a hatter before, but I imagine you would have something like this. So there's lots of different uh, materials to make the hats out of, some scissors here to chop it up, and I've used some looms to kind of represent maybe some kind of a sewing mechanism that they use. And uh, so there's a small chair there, and of course we still have the candle and other various details from when I initially made this room. As we head on out of Headwings, we can move over to this side of the build, which is a small seed shop. And so what we've got in here is a store for buying all the different seeds that you may need for either gardening or cooking purposes. And so you can see on this side, we have another smaller counter where again, you can receive your customers and there's a small barrel full of seeds here. And then on this side, I'm quite limited with how I can actually show <laughs> different sort of uh, displays for products, but I'm just really using item frames with some various different seeds here and some pots to do that and I think it does the job. And so this side of the building is actually a little bit more unique to what we had on that side and that is because this doubles as an apartment or a living space as well. So whoever works down here can actually go ahead and walk on up here to their kind of small house. And so what we've got here is a little burner, a sort of wood stove and you're going to see quite a few of these throughout. These are what these small chimneys represent up top that we saw a moment ago. And then as we walk on through, there's just a table, not much down here, but as we head on up, we do have a bit of storage and a small bedroom with some cabinets and things like that. I'm actually now realizing this is one of the only apartments I made that doesn't have any cooking area. So I'm sure this person just doesn't like cooking, but that is because there just isn't a lot of space in here since there's so many windows around. Okay, so let's head on out of that one and take a look at the inn. I've called this one the Bank Inn, and that is because it is right on the river bank here, which I thought would be a very appropriate name. And so towards this side, this is the main inn. And so as we head on in here, we have a kind of a reception area. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of wood in this area. And so I decided to swap out the original windows, which were kind of shutters using oak trap doors, and put in some of my windows just to make it look a little better. But otherwise you can see you've got some coat hacks and a place to again receive some customers and just a few bits and bobs. There's a small table down here. But as we head on up, this is where the main inn is. Now I have got a small table here and a burner here, but otherwise things are mostly the same. And that's because most of these builds are very claustrophobic and full of things. And so I thought it'd be refreshing for a change to have a nice big open room where Whoever's staying here could kind of just do whatever they like. Who knows, maybe you're a ballerina and you just like to dance around in this area. But as we head on up the ladder, I do actually have a small bedroom here as well. 
Now just next door on the other side, as you may remember, this was a very small space and so I've decided to just turn this into a small storeroom for some potatoes. So as you can see we've got a bunch of barrels and things like that around here, but that's about it. Now as we move on to these next builds, they are all residential and so we've just got a lot of different living spaces. Now firstly, the ground floor in this build hasn't actually changed much as I already put these details in before, but over here I have gone ahead and added a small cooking space. And so we have a kind of a cooker here with a sink and a tap and things like that. And then as we head on upstairs, things are very similar. I've got the fireplace here. I did go ahead and fix the back. If those of you who were wondering from the previous episode, I did spot that one. And then I added a bed here, but otherwise we still have all of the furnishings. And this is still the secret entrance that leads us down into this bit, but it's just blank. And there's pretty much nothing I can do with it. Now you may notice that it actually looks a little bit different in here. And that is because I decided to go ahead and extend the front of the building by an extra block. So it was originally up to here and it's now a little bit further. And that's just because I think it looks a little bit better overhanging, similar to how all of the buildings overhang on that side. And so things are just slightly tweaked, such as the windows, but otherwise it's just as you remember it. Okay, so as we move on to our tiny little house here, this is also a small residential building. So we've got some plant pot, another cooking area here and some table. But as we go on upstairs, we've got our bed and another stove or sort of log fire here with some table and plants again. This one is far more simple as it's just a small little house and I don't imagine whoever owns it is uh, very wealthy or really owns that much. But I did go ahead and tweak the interior to look a little better. So the way I did this is I managed to push the walls back on either side by an extra block by simply removing the walls. And so I originally had composters here, but I went ahead and basically just got rid of them and hid up the mess with the trapdoors to create more space in here. And that enabled me to add, you know, all of these details the way I wanted to. Okay, so for the final residential building here, we've got this brand new build that we made today. And so as we head on here, this side is the entrance. We've got some basic furnishings, such as a coat hook, a painting, a small desk space using, uh, what do you call it? The map block, what's this called? The cartography table, which has these nice textures on top, which was the only way of adding detail in here as these needed to be trap doors. And so I wasn't really able to place anything. Now we're gonna take a look what's down in the basement in a moment, but firstly, let's head on up here into this space. So once again, we've got some living space with the stove and the, uh, the sink with the tap there. And then I've got another cartography table here. I imagine this guy is probably a cartographer and I really liked how we have a sort of globe in this central room or this round room in the tower section here with the light above. I think it's very appropriate. And then in here, we just have sort of some basic details, maybe some pipes and things sticking out. A little bit of candle there for some lights. Now up here, it's still storage space, but I decided to go ahead and replace the attic storage space in this bit and convert it into a kind of a bedroom. And so once again, we have, you know, your kind of basic details like a chair and table, bookshelf, bed, plant. I really like this plant. <laughs> You'll see it a few times, but uh, I decided this time to switch things up and use some bamboo to create some different looking details. Okay, so let's take a look at the basement. Now, the way this basement works is it serves as a way for us to get over to the other side of the building. So as we head on down this cramped little staircase, you can see that we've got this corridor and there's a lot of mossy bits at the bottom here because I'm sure it's very dark and damp. And then a lot of different blocks, similar to how the bridge itself is constructed, to create this nice detailed corridor here. And the way we get up is through a ladder. It's very compact, but I was able to add a few details. So we have a bookshelf on the end here and then just simply a plant and a lamp. But this place looks decent enough. And then as we head on up, it does get a little bit better. So this is kind of like a small workshop. This is where the chimney would be for this one, or this is where the log burner is, which represents where the chimney is above. And yeah, so we just have a small desk here with a place to write and things with some storage up on the walls as well. All right, well, with that out of the way, we can finally get towards the next form of kind of a merchant building here. And this one, as you may have already spotted, is a pub. 
and it is indeed open. I decided to call this one the arch and that is because it is situated directly centered above this archway here, which similar to the bank, I think is a very appropriate name. As we head on into the interior through these small archways here, you can see that it is in fact a bustling pub. And so we've got a bar over on this side with barrels and various pots and sea pickles to represent uh, maybe jars and cups and things like that. And then we've got a barrel full of water here, which could maybe represent <sighs> some way that they're getting drinks out and some taps on the sides. It's all very compact, so it's still quite limited as to what you can do. But we do have some tables and chairs for guests to sit around here with some lighting. And this small staircase takes us on up into the upper section, which is, I consider still part of the pub. We've got kind of like a large table here for large gatherings to sit around and enjoy their drinks. But as we head on upstairs through this locked gate right here, I have gone and created a small attic space to store a whole variety of things, which I'm sure a bustling business would need to keep their business going. Now, as we head on back down, let's take a look at the final build. Now, this build at the moment is unnamed, so I haven't decided what this is going to be yet. And the reason for that is it's a very special building. You'll notice that down here, <laughs> there's really not a lot of room on the interiors. That's why on the ground floor, I just turned them into storage space. But you'll also notice it is in fact connected to this build right here. And you'll also notice as you head on into the interiors that there's not actually a way of getting up. And that's because this is a sort of a secret building. So if we head back on into the pub here, as you can see, we've got a secret wardrobe or display cabinet here with a door behind. And this leads us into the top section of this building, which reveals quite a large space. And so I imagine this could be something as simple as an uh, elegant way of getting into somebody's apartment or a place for secret gatherings. I'd love to hear what your ideas are for that. And so I haven't fully furnished it. I've just put in the uh, core details. So the infrastructure, as I like to call it, such as the banisters and a way of getting upwards here. So as we move on up, you can see we've got a kind of a oval balcony, as I like to call it. And it is possible to get round here to reveal that I did add in the stove so that we can have a chimney above and we don't have any chimneys without any fireplaces in this world. I've also got a small window up here, which can be seen from above as well. And so that's it. That is all of the details that I've added so far. I gotta say, I am overjoyed with how this project has turned out. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And as I fly on up, you'll see that it really is even better from above. I love all the variation in shape and also all of the variation in the block palettes between these buildings. I'm so excited to see how the rest of this city is going to turn out with so much more potential rather than being stuck with a simple straight line of builds here. We're going to be able to create so many different angles and variation between these buildings. I'm really looking forward to it. Now, if you're interested in getting your hands on the texture pack that I'm using here, as well as a world download of this world, if you're interested in checking some of these details out yourself, as well as all my schematics and things like that, they are all available in the description. But otherwise, that's going to pretty much wrap up today's video. I think what I'm going to work on now is I'm gonna set about making some plans to finish off this riverbed and start doing some landscaping, as I suppose in some way, this bridge isn't 100% finished until we can finish the bottom of it here. But anyways, like I said, that's gonna do it for now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.